What's important to me as your instructor is when you're creating artwork in Photoshop, you're always thinking about what your final output will be. Are you going to print it? Are you going to put it on a website? Are you creating an app for an iPad or an iPhone or something like that? And when you are, are thinking about your output, that can help you make decisions about what your file format should be. And so acceptable file formats that you can use for this class um, include JPEG, PNG, GIF, or GIF files, however you want to pronounce that, TIFF files, EPS files, PDF files. But those would be your output files. I want you to always work in a .psd Photoshop file, even though Photoshop can open the files that I've listed there and, and more, and it can also create files from your Photoshop file that are JPEGs, PNG, GIF files, etc. So Photoshop can open any of a number of different file formats. It is very versatile in what it can open and how it can edit the files. In this class, we will focus on a few file format options, and I've already read them. What I would like you to know right now is that JPEG, PNG, and GIF files are web file formats, and web file formats are great for the web or digital devices because those file formats are trying to make the file as small as possible. And so they have compression, they either have lossy or lossless compression. Lossy compression means that every time you hit save, your file will literally throw data out in order to make the file size smaller. Um, with lossless compression, it's not as destructive. Um, it will try to like twist and turn and fold the data to make it smaller. But either way, it's compressing your image. There are also print file formats, which are really great for printing because they hold a lot of data. And in printing, we need more data when we print than if we were to display it on the web. Print file formats are TIFFs, EPSs, and PDFs. Um, I like to say that TIFFs are good for raster-based images and EPSs are good for vector-based images. A PDF would be uh, good for, for any combination of the two. Uh, what's important about print file formats is they're going to have larger file sizes than your web file formats, and they're good for print, but they're bad for the web. And so JPEG, PNG, and GIF files are neither good nor bad, just like TIFF, EPS, and PDF files are neither good nor bad, but they are good for their intended output, and they are bad um, for, for the opposite. So web file formats are really good for the web because they're going to have small file sizes generally compared to print file formats, but they would be bad choices for printing because they don't keep the data necessary to print quality images, and vice versa with the print file formats. In addition to these file formats that can be opened by Photoshop, there are lots of different other file formats that Photoshop can work with because Photoshop can work with images, sound, and video. And so I've just copy and pasted this from a website. You can click on it. It's on the Adobe forums um, that shows all the different file formats that you could work with in Photoshop. It is different from our other Adobe programs. So InDesign is another class that I teach. InDesign cannot open any file format other than a .indd InDesign file. That's the native file format for InDesign. And a .idml InDesign markup language file that then converts your file to an INDD. Those are the only two file formats you can open. Um, compared to InDesign, Photoshop can open, I don't even want to count them, but let's say 30 different file formats. So keep that in mind. Um, lastly, before I move on to the next slide, what's important to me is that if you open any of these file formats, let's say somebody gives it to you, I immediately want you to convert it to a Photoshop.psd file and use that as your working file format.